yeah. Jason Garrett, welcome to the Philadelphia. Huh? What? Oh, we got somebody with some emotion? Marquand Manuel. Marquand Manuel. Welcome to the Philadelphia Eagles. Boy. <laughs> reason to be excited people the philadelphia eagles nation got reason to be excited we made a good hire we made a really good hire and i'm again the reason why it's a, such a big deal man my, my hair <laughs> but so eagles hire mark Quine manuel as the defensive backs coach Eight years of experience as a player at safety. Seven years of coaching experience. He got fire under him like Jim Schwartz. But he got arguably more fire. Arguably more fire. This is a good thing. Because here's the reason why. Look back at the coaching situations over the last years. We started out with Andy Reid and his regime. Okay, that was good. That was good. Yeah, we didn't get a Super Bowl out of it, but that was, they was a good staff. And then the Eagles, they got a way of being inconsistent with coaching situations. Because then after that, they go to Chip Kelly. Everybody know what happened with that one. Chip Kelly and his staff did terrible. And then we got out of that and we got back into the good side. Then we got uh, Doug Peterson, Frank Wright, Jim Schwartz. And then we was doing good. And then they made a bonehead decision of picking Mike Grow. I don't even know why they picked him in the first place. He was always a losing coordinator. It don't make sense. It, well, because he worked with um, Alshon Jeffrey. They were losing. They always got a thing of picking people with losing pedigrees. I like this move because Marquand Manuel came from the Falcons. And he was solely, re he was, he was a, a, a big reason why they ended up going to the Super Bowl. They lost, but they went to the Super Bowl. In, in, in one of his years. This year, I looked at I looked at everything about the Falcons and everything because I follow everything. I looked at I looked at the uh, the season that the Falcons had, what the defense did and stuff like that, the injuries that they established, and I came to the conclusion that hell yeah, he was a scapegoat. They fired him from defensive coordinator for absolutely no reason at all. He ain't have anything to work with. But you know what? Another man's scapegoat is another man's treasure. One man scapegoat, you know what the hell I'm saying. But bottom line, we got the guy. We got the guy. I love this move because they need a fire. They need a fire to be lit under them, and they need somebody who actually knows how to play to be teaching them. Because clearly, I don't know. I don't know if the other defensive back, Corey Unlin, I'm assuming – he probably didn't play, but my God, I know that I know they got injuries and stuff, but man, <laughs> like they was doing terrible before the injury. So you can't even use the situation that the, that the defensive line coach got the defensive line coach. They was actually playing good. They just kept getting injured and it just kept on being a cycle. You on the other hand, they, them, <laughs> but I'm I'm really happy about the move. We also got um news that Matt Burke um is most likely heading into a defensive line um coach role. Everybody know how I feel about that from the last video. 
I don't agree because our defensive line coach been with us. He could point he you could say whatever you want about last season. Oh, he wasn't generating pressure. We was good at stopping the rush. But then if you go back the year before that, what was we doing? Terrorizing. We was terrorizing. And you could you could keep going back. We was terrorizing. Last year, as soon as it as soon as it, it's kind of like a Marquand Manuel situation. Because really I don't think that we should have got rid of our defensive line coach. But it is what it is. Matt Burke. Hopefully he do good, because, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I feel like this is heading to be one of them bonehead moves. One of them bonehead moves. But you know what? We got so much talent on the on the defensive line that it might make it might cover up some of the flaws that may have been there with any other team. So we got to look into that. But, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. And make sure y'all like, subscribe, and continue to come back. I'm here every single day, posting every single day for you guys. I was going to talk about Donovan and uh, T.O. in this video. Nah, nah. We we got we on the bigger and better things right now. <laughs> they they need to they need to cut it out anyway. I don't want to I don't want to Google Philadelphia Eagles and see Donovan McNabb and T.O. feuding coming up. I've seen, this is an episode I've already seen. Y'all not even playing for the Eagles. And Donovan McNabb, don't get me started on you. Some people might like you from the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't. I don't at all. You a hater. <laughs> you a hater. I, 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 Like I said, I was going to talk about it. I, I, I agree with T.O. But... At the end of the day, we got bigger and better things to cover. We got bigger and better things to cover. So, with that being said, I'm going to come out with a video tomorrow going more into um, Matt Burke if he gets hired and also um, offensive coordinator. We got some offensive coordinator candidates out there that they looking at. Um, you got uh, the 49ers, um, the 49ers guy. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. Um, but you got the 49ers guy as a as a um, as an option at offensive coordinator that they looking at. I think anybody coming from a winning pedigree is definitely somebody that you should consider. Um, I never was really on board with the whole uh, Deuce Staley as offensive coordinator uh, or uh, Josh McCown as the offensive coordinator. Not because I think that they are trash or anything like that. It's just I don't know if they got experience. Like you talking about McCown come straight from a player to an offensive coordinator. That I don't even know if that happened before. That don't make sense to me. If it did, and Deuce Staley, he would make more sense. He would make more sense. He would make more sense. He would. But there's other qualified people out there that's just more qualified. I think that they should have gave they do Staley a chance a long time ago. And we wouldn't be in this situation where we feel like now we just we just like pushing do Staley to the side over and over again. That's the problem. But it's all right. We going to get into it though. We going to get into it though. I post every single day um every single day between um 1 to 3 uh, Eastern time. So be on the lookout because I'm coming. And we're going to get into more details about everything as the time comes. But until then, um, make sure you like, subscribe. Like I said, man, we trying to make this big. This is a, this is, this going to be a big, this going to be a big journey for us. And it's going to be fun all the way there. Cause Hey, you know what, you know what the goal is at the end of the day. That Super Bowl got to come back again. So we going to make sure that we, we give every all the support that we can for our Eagles. And we going to embrace the hate from the Cowboys, Redskins, and Giants fans. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at PhillyQTV. At PhillyQTV. No spaces, obviously. But with that, 
I'll talk to y'all later.